Hey, Science Tens, what's going on? It's Mr. Walton here. So today we're going to be doing an efficiency lab. And in this efficiency lab, what we're going to be doing is we're dropping some balls from a height of one meter. We're going to see how high they bounce back up. We're going to calculate how much energy, how much potential energy they had at the beginning, so at the top, how much potential energy they had after it bounced back up, and we're going to compare them and calculate the efficiency, how much energy was preserved um, and was useful at the end of the bounce. So our problem, how efficient are balls in transferring the gravitational potential energy, right? When they, when they start from a particular height and you drop it and it's bounces back up. It's not going to bounce back up to its previous height, right? It's going to be some different height. And we want to know how much energy um, was retained in the final gravitational energy. So we measure the height of the ball, drop the ball, and record the height after it bounces back up. We're also going to need the mass for these balls. So the example that I'm going to talk about is a big bouncy ball. And then you're going to have your choice of uh, of six other balls that you can choose from in order to finish this out, okay? And so what we, uh, the, I mean, the best way to just explain it to you is just by showing it to you. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So here, here we have the mass of the big bouncy ball, and the mass of the big bouncy ball is 0 0.1166 kilograms. The scale is reading in grams, so we're just converting to kilograms. So we've got the ball at the at the one meter line. It's a little bit above because of the camera angle. Just have mercy on me. It was, you know, just give me the benefit of the doubt. I'm trying to drop them all at, all from one meter. So here we go. The ball's dropping, and after it bounces back up, here we go. When it bounces back up, it's got a height a final height of, it's in between 0 0.7 and it's in between 0 0.75. So we're going to guess it to be about 0 0.73. So that's the final height of the ball. Okay, so that was really all we needed in order for us to do that. Um, so let's go ahead and record the information. We got a mass of 1166 kilograms. We had an initial height of 1.00 meters. They're all going to be 1.00. I tried to start them all at one meter. The height after the bounce for this particular ball was 0 0.73 meters. Okay, here's where we actually start. What we have to do is we have to calculate the initial potential energy of this ball. How do we calculate the initial potential energy? Well, potential energy is m g h it's the mass 0 0.1166 kilograms multiplied by acceleration due to gravity 9.81 meters per second squared times the initial height of the object one meter so when i do that calculation i get 1.14 four joules and I, I'm okay I probably should have rounded this to three digits but just okay have a little bit of mercy on me right now so 1.144 joules we're gonna get a lot of these values to be really really small this is the heaviest ball we used all uh, for the entire lab and it's its energy is just barely over a joules for so for some of these you're gonna get some pretty darn small numbers okay just try to retain at least three significant digits um, for your calculations until the end, okay? So our final potential energy, how much potential energy did it have when it bounced back up? All right, we can do that too. So that's also M times G times H. The mass didn't change. Acceleration due to gravity didn't change. But the one thing that did change was its height. So we had a final height of 0 0.73 meters. Now when I multiply all these together, I get a potential energy of 0 0.835 joules. 
So we've got our two energies, 1.144 joules and 0 0.835 joules. What we're going to do is we're going to calculate the efficiency of that energy transformation. So what was the energy input? Well, that was our initial energy, right? So our efficiency is just the energy that we get out, our useful output divided by input times 100%. The output energy was our final energy. Our final energy, that was our output. Our initial energy, that was our input. Okay, so our output energy was 0 0.835 joules. So 0 0.835 joules. Our initial energy, or the energy in, was 1.144. So 1.144 joules times 100%. And when I do that on my calculator, I get a value that rounds to be 0 0.730. Oh, sorry. I get a value that rounds to be 73.0%. Perfect. Perfect. And I'll give you a hint, this should be very familiar to you, right? This percentage should resemble, it should resemble something, okay? So that's a, that's a little bit of a hint. Your efficiency percentage, the way we were doing this lab, should resemble your height after the bounce. It won't be exactly it, but it'll be pretty close. So your job, what you have to do, what I want you to do, is I want you to, to get um, the information for two other balls, okay? And we're going to put up the information for six other balls here in a second. I want you to get the information for any two of these other six objects, and I want you to do the calculations for them. And I want you to compare my efficiency of the big bouncy ball to your two balls. And I want you to say which one of these is more efficient at bouncing and just a really quick explanation why. How do you know it was more efficient at bouncing? I'll give you a hint. It has to do with how much energy was preserved. Okay, so let us know if you have any questions. Uh, as always, you can, uh, um, you can uh, contact us during the office hours between 10.45 and 11.15 every single morning. And uh, if you don't have any problems, then I don't have any problems. Have a good day.